Hello everyone, welcome back to our lecture series on Japanese history. And today we're going to be uh, talking about a book of poetry uh, titled 100 Poets, One Poem Each. In Japanese, the title is Hyakunin Ishu. This was assembled by the late Heian era uh, poet Fujiwara no Teika. And ever since that time, uh, Hyakunin Ishu, this set of a hundred poems, uh, has been one of the most famous, read as one of the most famous uh, compilations of Japanese his, uh, poetry uh, uh, in Japanese history. And Hyakunin Ishu is has been read throughout this time, and it's still read today. Uh, it has had tremendous impact uh, on, on society, and most school children are familiar with uh, this set of poems because they play frequently a game on New Year's of karuta, where part of the poem will be read, and then students will search and try to grab uh, another card from a pile which contains the second half of the poem. So uh, this is a very famous uh, work of, of poetry, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about some of the historical background in which this uh, volume was composed, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about who Fujiwara no Teika was. And then after that, uh, I'm going to be explaining a project that we can do with some of these poems. It's, it's a translation project translating uh, a poem of our choice into English. Many of these, these are just short waka poems uh, and with a, a basic knowledge of the historical background and of classical Japanese, these can be translated into English uh, rather easily and it makes kind of a fun project to do. Okay, so 100 poets, uh, one poem each is the English title of uh, this book of poetry. And as I mentioned, it was written by Fujiwara no Teika. Now the characters for his name can also be read as Sarai'e, uh, but usually he's just referred to as Teika, uh, who was born in 1162 to a family of poets, including his father, who was a very famous poet, Fujiwara no Shunze. And now this comes at a time when, at the late Heian era, uh, when there was fighting between uh, the Taira and the Minamoto uh, clans, and the Fujiwara family had largely lost their grip on power. In place of that, uh, some retired emperors had uh, started to exercise more and more control uh, and then in 1192, uh, Minamoto no Yoritomo set up a new uh, government, tent government, uh, called Bakufu uh, in Kamakura. So it was a period of, of great turmoil, and because the Fujiwara had largely lost uh, much of their power, members of the Fujiwara family and branch families such as Teika had to turn to uh, other arenas uh, to kind of entertain themselves since they were more removed from the political field now. Uh, well, this worked out well for Teika, who was mainly interested in poetry anyway, and so he turns to poetry to kind of focus his, his energies. Uh, and in 1192, he participated in uh, for instance, a Ropyakuban Utawase poetry contest in 600 rounds. So he's starting to establish a name for himself as a poet, not quite uh, achieving the level of fame as his father yet. Um, at the same time, many of the retired emperors, such as Emperor Gotoba, uh, these Insei emperors, um, also because of the fighting between uh, the Taira and uh, Minamoto, and because the government, the seat of power eventually shifted to uh, Kamakura, 
they also turn their energies to uh, other areas uh, that were a, a bit ostensibly less political. Uh, so when Emperor Gotoba, when he was 20, he retired his position as reigning emperor and, uh, and turned to focus mainly on his other love, which was uh, poetry, or his main love, we should say. And so in t uh, the year 1200, he, uh, Emperor Gotoba, held this imperial Hyakushu poetry contest, and uh, Fujiwara no Teika participated in this. Now, initially, uh, Teika's participation was opposed by Gotoba's father-in-law, Minamoto Michika, uh, who didn't like Teika and tried to keep him out of the contest. But uh, Teika's father, uh, Shunze, ha was very famous and well-known and respected, and he wrote a letter to Gotoba, you know, urging uh, him to allow the participation of his son, and Gotoba eventually consented. So Teika participates in this contest and performs quite well and attracted the attention of uh, Gotoba and was even asked then to uh, participate in the compilation of a new imperial uh, waka anthology, the Shinkokin Wakashu, which is usually just referred to as the Shinkokinshu. Uh, however, the relationship between Teika and Gotoba uh, soon soured um, their personalities and politics clashed uh, quite frequently uh, and dramatically. Uh, they first disagreed over the poems to be included in the uh, Shinko Kinshu, but their feud continued uh, and was exacerbated by a number of other events. And in 1209, Teika became the poetry teacher to the shogun Minamoto no Sanetomo, well, Gotoba greatly disliked the uh, Kamakura Bakufu and the shogun and was interested in uh, taking power back for himself and for uh, the uh, emperors in the imperial uh, family in Kyoto. Um, and eventually, Gotoba even led a revolt uh, in, against the Kamakura Bakufu in 1221, and this was known as the Jokyu War. Uh, he failed, though, and was banished <clears throat> to an island, and this largely then removed him from, uh, from the political scene, and the Kamakura Bakufu then tightened its grip on power, and Teika ended up on the right side of this, and he benefited in a number of ways. He was on uh, because of his close relationship to the Minamoto, and uh, because he had al already gotten in a number of uh, uh, kind of, uh, you know, arguments and disagreements with Gotoba. So once Gotoba is out of the way, this opens up the path for Teika uh, to really excel then in the later years of his life. Uh, he participates in the compilation of another imperial a waka anthology, the Shin Chokusen Wakashu in 1234. And then in 1234, that same year, in 35, he compiled uh, what we're talking about uh, today and what we will be looking at more, uh, Hyakunin Ishu, this 100 po uh, poems, or 100 poets, um, one poem each. And originally, Hyakunin Ishu was inscribed uh, on, with pictures on the sliding doors of uh, a villa in Ogura, an area of Kyoto. I want to focus, though, mainly, and we'll look at Hyakunin Ishu and some of the poems there later, and there's many great studies of also the uh, Shinko Kinshu and the Waka poetry of uh, Teika, but I want to look at uh, another interesting aspect, which is how uh, Teika kind of touched on political issues through some of his writings and his diaries and his poems, and we can just simply call this the politics of poetics. And here's a, a sample from his diary, uh, the Megitsuki, which uh, illustrates his disagreements with Emperor Gotoba. 
And so he wrote, in a situation like the present, where he, Emperor Gotoba, has included poems by a great many people, one who has never heard of, uh, one has never heard of, whose names have remained in almost total obscurity for generations, and persons who have only be recently begun to attract attention, had as many as ten poems apiece included. In such a situation, it is no particular distinction for me to have forty-odd poems chosen, or for Ietaka to have a score or more. The ex-sovereign's recent decisions make it appear he is choosing men rather than poems, a questionable procedure. So this is referring to the disagreements over which poems to include in the Shinko Kinshu uh, that were going on between Gotoba and Teika. And Teika is saying, it seems like Gotoba is just picking people that he likes rather than um, choosing poetry for, uh, for its quality. Uh, and then at a later instance, uh, some years later, uh, Gotoba invited uh, Teika to participate in an Utawase, a poetry contest. And at this time, Teika had, uh, was actually, he refused because he wanted to take time to mourn the anniversary of, or to, to commemorate the anniversary of his mother's death and to mourn his mother at this time. But Gotoba insisted that Teika participate and basically forced him uh, to come to this event. And Teika was very upset about this. So one of the poems that he, he submitted to the event uh, was this one. And it said, Under the willows in the field by the roadside, the young sprouts burgeon, in competition as to which, alas, has most to bewail. <clears throat> so this illustrates that um, he's participating in this competition, but he's feeling very sad uh, because of he's remembering, you know, his mother uh, and and how she passed away. And he's basically, you know, saying, I didn't want to participate in this event. Um, you know, why did you make me do so? This poem outraged uh, Emperor Gotoba and was basically one of the last straws uh, in their already strained relationship. <clears throat> then later, uh, after the, the Jokyu War, um, there were another of uh, other uh, political happenings in society and actually disasters, many natural disasters that occurred. And Teika wrote about these in his diary as well. Um, in 1225, for instance, there was a severe drought, an epidemic, and a plague of locusts. And then two years later, uh, some powerful typhoons led to flooding of the Kamo River in Kyoto. Um, and things continued to get worse. In 2030, uh, in 1230, sorry, uh, a series of strange weather led to crop failures, and starvation, and then famine, uh, which continued into uh, 1231. <clears throat> so in that year, Ateka wrote in his diary, kind of describing the scene in the capital, and he said, Starving people collapse and their dead bodies fill the streets. Every day the numbers increase. The stench has gradually reached my house. Day and night alike, people go by carrying the dead in their arms, too numerous to count. So he's really describing these terrible things that are going on in the background. And I just wanted to highlight these to to show how take a touched on politics and elements of society, things that were going on in his writings, uh, and uh, in addition to the many other uh, beautiful pieces of Waka poetry that he composed. Now, I'm going to move on and talk about uh, one of the poems in the Hyakunin Ishu set, uh, and this is a poem here that I have then translated into English and then I give a brief analysis of it. And this is going to serve as a model then for the project uh, that, that we are all going to do after this, which is choose one poem, translate it, and give our analysis of it. <clears throat> so in Japanese, uh, the poem reads, Oukenaku ukiyo no tami ni oukana wagatatsu soma ni sumizome no sode. And this is by the monk uh, Jian. 
and who at this time is a monk uh, in the famous uh, temple on top of Mount Hie uh, in Yakuji. Now I translate this uh, poem in this way. Though I fear it beyond my power to save this sad and troubled world, from my temple perch on Mount Hie, I will do the best I can. Now we see here that uh, Jian as well is touching on some of the turmoil and disasters that are going on uh, at this time, describing a period of turmoil in uh, the capital. So uh, a lot of Yakuni Nishu poems are focused on love uh, and scenes from nature, but at the same time, there also are these other poems that could be considered, um, you know, kind of political in a way as well. And here's my analysis. Uh, this poem was written by the Tendai monk Jian shortly after he had come to train as a monk at the top uh, Tendai temple of Enyakuji on Mount Hie. The purpose of Enyakuji was to protect the capital, Kyoto, and the rest of the country. However, at the time this poem was written, around uh, 1134, Kyoto was in a period of turmoil, and there was much fighting, sickness, and famine. Therefore, Jian was worried whether he could protect the people with his prayers, and this is where the line, Oh kenaku uki uh, ukiyo no tame ni o kana comes in. Uh, and then he says the line, uh, Waga Tatsu Soma ni, and this refers to Mount Hiei, and was originally a line uh, written by the monk Saicho. Sumizome no Sode here indicates the black robes worn by monks, and is thus an analogy for the monks themselves. So this is my analysis and translation of this one poem from Hyakuni Nishu. And in our project, I'd like us to basically do the same thing, to choose one poem from the Hyakuni Nishu set, uh, read about the historical background. This is, I will provide these files for everyone uh, for the poem, translate the poem into English, and then write a paragraph, uh, as I did in the last example, of approximately 300 words which introduces and explains the poem. Uh, and you should include the following information in your writing. An exp explanation of the poem's meaning, including relevant details from the historical background. This is actually basically what I did in the paragraph, but in addition to this, um, it would be great if you could also then uh, kind of look at the poem's use of language, metaphor, or intertextuality. Intertextuality uh, is when a piece of literature refers to an earlier piece of literature. And in the example that I showed here, um, the monk Jian is making a reference with this line here, Wagatatsu Somani, to an earlier poem written by the monk Saicho. Uh, so this would be an example of intertextuality. How are other earlier pieces of writing referenced, uh, if at all? And then, in addition, this is something I did not do, but I would like uh, everyone to do in, in your writings, uh, is to add an explanation of your reasons for why you chose the poem uh, and or why you like it. Okay, so that uh, is an introduction to some of the historical background uh, regarding Hyakunin Ishu, Fujiwara no Teika, its compiler, uh, and talking about some of the events that were going on at the time this was written, including some of the uh, political events and uh, political and social events uh, that were happening. And then I also introduced a project that we can do, which is to choose one of these poems, uh, translate it into English, and give our analysis. So uh, this is a really fun project, and I hope uh, you guys have fun with it too. And I look forward to hearing everyone's uh, translations and analysis. Thank you, and see you next time.